Hey there, it's Izzy here again. After finishing this series about creating animated charts in motion, I decided to show you another alternative. And the reason for that is because we were working with motion, which has two and a half dimensional capabilities. And I want to demonstrate an option where we can work with 3D graphics. And Blender is a great solution for that because it's free and open source. But first of all, what do I mean when I say two and a half dimensions in motion? And what that means is we're working in a 3D space, that's true, but the objects themselves are just flat objects. So it's sort of like if you have index cards and you're arranging them in a three-dimensional space, yes, you're moving them in 3D space, but the objects themselves are still flat index cards, right? So that's the way motion works. The objects themselves don't have depth. But Blender is something where it's actual 3D graphics. And so you can create three-dimensional types of scenes. And so if you wanna have a bar chart with three-dimensional charts, you can do that very easily in Blender. And that's what I wanna demonstrate. So Blender is free and it's open source and you can download it from blender.org. I have previous videos that I've made about Blender in the library. And so I'm not gonna go over the fundamentals today. If you wanna see more of the fundamentals, maybe go back and watch one of those videos, but I'll just show you how you can create a bar chart type of graph in Blender. All right, so I'm just gonna click out to get out of the splash screen. And now one thing I always like to mention is that the way you navigate in Blender is using a three button mouse. Now you can do it without a three button mouse, but it's so much easier with a three button mouse. So I have one attached to my computer right now. So you have a left, left mouse button, a right mouse button, and a middle scroll wheel. And that middle scroll wheel is also a button. And that's very useful for moving around. So for example, if I wanna orbit around my object, I just hold down that scroll wheel. So it's the middle mouse button, I click and drag, and I can orbit around that cube. So that's how you orbit. And if I want to dolly in, I can just scroll with that middle mouse button like that. Scroll to dolly in or dolly out. All right. And if I want to kind of pan over, you hold down shift on the keyboard. And as you do that, you hit that middle mouse button again and you can just pan around this way. OK, so very useful. I always like to bring those things up because if you've never touched Blender before, it's helpful to know how to move around like that. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode. I was in object mode Now I'm going into edit mode. That allows me to edit the mesh or the model itself. I'm going to hit option A to deselect everything. And what I want to do here is I want to select just the back face and the bottom face. So I'm going to go to face mode and I'm going to click here on the back face. And I'm going to click here, hold down shift and I'll click that bottom one. So now I've got just the back and the bottom. If you look around, you can see none of the other faces are selected right now, just those two. And then I'm gonna to go to select and I'm gonna invert the selection so I've only got everything else selected but not the back and not the bottom. And then I'm gonna hit X on the keyboard and I'm gonna delete the faces. X is the keyboard shortcut for delete. So I'll delete those faces and now we've got this. I'm gonna hit A on the keyboard to select everything. I'm gonna hit S on the keyboard to get into scale mode. And now I'm in scale mode. I can just move my mouse like this to scale this up. I'm gonna make it really big. There we go, maybe something like that. And then I'll just click with the mouse button to lock it. And then I'll hit tab to get out of edit mode. Okay, so this is gonna be the backdrop for our bar chart. And let's bring it up to where it's a little closer to the floor. So I'll just kind of move around to the front like this. I'm gonna hit G on the keyboard to get into grab mode. Now I'll hit Z on the keyboard, which is up and down in Blender. And when you hit Z after hitting G, it constrains it. So maybe something like this. It doesn't have to be perfect. That looks pretty good. Okay, so this will be the backdrop for us. The next thing I wanna do is add a bar for our bar chart. So I'm gonna hit Shift A on the keyboard to add a new object and we'll add a cube. And then let's go into edit mode again. I'll hit tab and I'm gonna scale this. So I'll hit S on the keyboard and then Z and that'll scale it up and down. So this will be a chance to kind of turn it into a very tall bar like that. All right, and then I'll click to stop and let's take a look. I'll just hold down shift and pan over using that middle mouse button. Let's also make it so it's a little less depth to it. So I'm gonna hold down S and when I tap S, that goes into scale mode. Then I'm gonna hit Y. That'll constrain it to the Y value and then I'm gonna move. I'm gonna make it a little bit more narrow. There we go, something like that. Okay, and then I'll hit tab to get out of edit mode. So that's gonna be the first bar in our bar chart. And it doesn't matter that I have it sticking out the bottom like this because that's okay. We're, that part's not gonna be showing up in the scene. So it's okay if it's just hanging out uh, beneath the backdrop like that. That's totally fine. 
Okay, so now let's add a few more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this one. I'll hit Shift D on the keyboard, that goes into duplicate mode. So now I'm gonna hit X on the keyboard to constrain the movement of this duplicate to the X axis. And I'll just move the mouse over. And I want it to be around negative six and I'm keeping an eye on the number over here in this area, I want it to be negative six. And by the way, if you wanna see it, if you're not seeing this here and you wanna see a, a faster way, hit N on the keyboard and you can have this little window pop up and you can see that says negative 5.9, right? So let's change that to negative six. There we go. And then I'm gonna hit Shift D again, hit X on the keyboard to constrain it to the X axis, go like this. There we go, and let's do negative three. Great. And then I'll select this one, hit Shift D, X, try to get to about three again. There we go, and then hit Shift D, X, and let's go to about six, in fact, exactly six. Okay, so those are evenly spaced. That looks pretty good. All right, let's add a little bit of a detail to this that I like to do, and that is I'm gonna add a little bit of a bevel to the edges. Right now, if you get in there really close, the edges themselves of the object are kind of boring. It's just flat, it's an exact 90 degree angle. And in real life, nothing is really 90 degrees like that, not perfectly 90 degrees. So we need to have at least a tiny little bevel there. So I'll select this object. I'm going to use a modifier to do this, so I'll just click on the modifier tab here, go up to add modifier and add a bevel. And by default, it's a little probably a little too much here. Let's increase the segments. We'll go to three, and then I'm going to make it a little bit smaller, in fact, significantly smaller. I'm going to click and hold down on the amount, hold down shift, and drag to the left. And as I do that, you can see I can adjust that bevel. I can make it bigger, or I can make it smaller. I'm going to make it really small. So it looks like uh, 0.018 is about good. All right, so now I wanna copy that value. I want it to be the same value for all of these. I'm gonna add the same bevel to all of them. One way I can do this is just by hovering the mouse pointer over this little field, hit Command C, that copies that value. Now I can come over here to this one, add the bevel modifier, switch the segments to three like that, and then I'm gonna hover over this amount value and I'm gonna hit Command V and it'll paste in the same value. So that's one way you can do that. But if you have a lot of different objects, it's helpful actually to uh, apply the same modifier to a bunch of things at the same time. So for example, if I click on this one and then I shift click on this one and then shift click on that one, now I've got all three of those selected, then I'm gonna shift click on this one. So all four of them are selected, but this one is the active selection. And so what that means is I can take what is applied to the active selection and apply it to the other objects that are already selected. The way you do that is you go up to the object menu and you go down to link transfer data and you choose copy modifiers. So here we go, copy modifiers. And now the same modifier has been applied to these other three objects with the same values that this one had. So all of them, yeah, if you look at this, it catches the light a little bit better. And if, if you really can't remember what it looked like before, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this selected like this. I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna click this and just turn it off. So that's what it looked like before. And that's with the bevel. Do you see how it's more interesting? So that's without, that's with. It's just more interesting. It catches the light a little bit. It's more realistic. In fact, let's add a bit of a modifier, a bevel modifier to our backdrop as well, because we have this 90 degree angle here, which once again, isn't realistic. So let's go to add modifier and we'll choose add a bevel. And let's increase the segments here too. We'll go to five and I'm gonna make it much smaller. I'm gonna hold down shift and click and drag, make it much smaller, maybe something like that. Okay, very good. All right, so now we have the bars. Let's arrange them in their final resting positions. And actually, let's make the backdrop a little closer too. When I come around to the side, there's way too much space there between them. So I've got the backdrop selected. I probably ought to rename it. Right now, it's still just called cube. So let's call it backdrop like that. And let's hit G on the keyboard and then Y on the keyboard to constrain that grab movement. And we're going to go like this and bring it closer. Maybe something like that. Okay, very good. All right, so there's some nice depth there, some space between the backdrop and the bars. All right, okay, so now let's move these into their final position. So I'm gonna select this one. I'm gonna hit G on the keyboard and hit Z on the keyboard. Z is up and down in Blender. And I'm just gonna drag this down, maybe something like that. Good, and then let's grab this one, G and Z. We'll make it maybe a little bit taller, maybe like that. And this one, G and then Z. Make it a little bit shorter, G 
and then Z. Let's make this a little taller and then this one will make it quite a bit taller. Maybe something like that. Okay, so this is gonna be our bar chart. That's what it looks like now. Okay, so now we have the objects in their final position. We've modeled them. It's a very straightforward, basic scene. Let's add some very simple materials to these. Now, in this default mode, you don't actually see the effect of materials. Materials are what's on the surface. It gives it color, it gives it texture, and that sort of thing. And if you wanna see the materials, you have to switch to a different mode. So let's go to this one. This is our material preview type of mode where we can actually see what the materials look like. Right now, everything just has kind of a white material, it looks like. I'm gonna select this one. And I'll go to the Materials tab here. Let's create a new material and let's call it Bar Material. So all the bars will have this material and let's make it kind of a blue. So I'm gonna switch the base color. I'll just click on it, drag it over. We'll make it kind of a lighter blue, maybe something like that. And then if I want, the way materials work in Blender is that you make the material once, but then you can reuse that same material on multiple objects. And so if I select this one, I can come over here to this pop-up menu and choose the bar material. And in fact, it's very fast for me just to do the same thing for these other ones. But if I wanted to, if I had a lot of objects, you can actually do a similar type of thing using that link where you select all the objects and then apply the same material to all of them at the same time. All right, and then let's select the backdrop and we'll just rename it. We'll call it back drop material. Let's change the base color to be more of a grayscale, maybe a lighter gray, something like that. Not perfectly white. Okay, very good. All right, so now we have the bars in place. We have some basic materials on them. Now there's more to do. We need to add lighting. We need to add some animation. I'd say it's probably more complex to create this scene in Blender versus creating it in motion. But once you get used to the interface, it's really not that bad. And I think it's very useful to be able to work with three-dimensional type of graphics as well. Anyway, we'll get into keyframes and lighting in the upcoming videos. But for this one, I just wanted to get the basic scene set up. Hopefully you found the information in this video helpful. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.